In this video, we're going to begin our discussion of while loops. Fundamentally, these aren't going to be that different than for loops. We really just have to be careful about how we analyze things. In particular, the weird thing about a while loop is that looking at it, it might not be immediately obvious how many times it runs. For a lot of for loop problems, people can glance at them and go, yeah, I can understand how many times that runs or have a rough guess of it. With a while loop, it's maybe not so obvious. So let's try and find out some way that we can to figure out how many times does a while loop run. In particular, if we look at this example in front of us, all of the code inside of the while loop takes constant time. So if we can figure out how many times the while loop runs, we can take the cost of each run, that constant, and multiply by the number of times that it occurs. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's sort of manually track things. We're going to keep track of the number of times the while loop runs, and also the value of the variable that's dealing with the while loop, so the value of i. And we're going to try to see what happens as this code proceeds. Well. Let's start with our initial condition in some sense. What is the initial value of i before the while loop even attempts to execute? So before the while loop starts, after zero iterations, the value of i is zero. And then if we look at the code, the value of i is updated by adding 10 to it. So after one iteration of the while loop, we add 10 to i. And then after two iterations of the while loop, we've added 10 to the previous value, so that's 10 plus 10 or 20. After three iterations, we'll add 10 again. And I'm actually noticing a pretty nice pattern here. And after a certain number of iterations, a variable number, I don't know, let's call it k, what is the value of i? When it's zero, it's zero. When it's one, it's 10. When it's two, it's 20. When it's three, it's 30. That's looking a heck of a lot like 10 times k which should not be surprising. We're continually adding k. Continually adding by a value is multiplication. The definition of multiplication is repeated addition. So having it be multiplication seems pretty reasonable. And then we want to try to figure out how many times does it run? Well, this gives me a generic expression to describe the value of i after k iterations. So this tells me after k iterations, of the while loop, i is equal to 10k. And I also know when the while loop will stop running because the code tells me this runs until i is bigger than n. So the while loop stops, the loop stops once i is bigger than n. That's the opposite of the condition that's here. But I know i is equal to 10k. So if I replace i with that, I need to find out when is 10k greater than n. So I divide by 10 and get k greater than n divided by 10. And now this is a little awkward because we need to find out what is the smallest integer that is bigger than n over 10, and that looks a little awkward. We could deal with this with floor functions and try to be mathematically precise. However, it is almost never going to matter. And in our class, it really will not matter. So instead of trying to fiddle through, well, is this k equals n over 10 rounded down plus one or something? I don't know exactly. Instead of doing that, we're going to solve a simpler problem, which is a very, very close approximation of the actual value of k. So instead of doing this, let's just solve a different problem, which is solve for when does it equal that value? We'll be off by one, maybe two by doing this. So when, when does 10k equal n? Regardless of the fact that this is actually going to iterate once more, if it equals 10, we'll be extremely close to the right answer by doing this. Close enough that we'll be off by, like I said, one or two in the worst case there. So if we solve this, we get that k equals n divided by 10. That k value tells me how many times does the while loop need to run to reach the stopping condition of the while loop. 
Therefore, that k is the number of iterations of the while loop. If we'd solved the more exact equation, it would be the exact number, or in our case, it's a very, very close approximation of the exact number. So the while loop runs k times. So the while loop runs approximately k times. And k is n over 10. So if this code is run approximately k times, then the running time would just be k times the cost, because that tells me how many times does it execute. And if I'm trying to figure out the total cost, well, I'm just gonna multiply it by the cost, of course. So the total running time, t of n, the running time of funk is equal to k, which was n divided by 10, times the cost of each realm, which is c. Thus, t of n is in theta of n. I claim this isn't that surprising, just on an intuitive level. And let's go back up to the code to try to figure out why. So if we look at the while loop, as a rough guess, we start with i equals zero, and we're adding 10 to it each time. How many times do you have to add 10 to get to n? Well, about n divided by 10. So of course, that while loop runs about n divided by 10 times. Without doing any of the sort of math that we did here, our intuitive reasoning seems to hold up. And this will be the case for lots of our examples. And this idea of trying to capture how to express i in terms of the number of iterations is our foundational technique for how to analyze while loops. So creating a table like the one we did over here is the way we're going to analyze while loops. So we're going to see several more examples of this. We're going to need to add a couple of different caveats as we go, but this is our starting point for analyzing while loops.